Hi friends, most of you watch my channel without subscribing. Please subscribe if you like my stories. Have a good rest. An innocent game gone wrong. My name is Mark and I'm 35 years old. I met my wife Claire when we were in college. We dated for a year before I popped the question and we got married a few months after graduation. That was 12 years ago. Our marriage has had its typical ups and downs, but for the most part, we've been happy together. We both work office jobs and enjoy decompressing on the weekends by relaxing at home, going out with friends or taking short trips. A few months ago, on a lazy Sunday afternoon, Claire and I were sitting on the couch scrolling through her Facebook feed. She was showing me pictures of her friends from high school and college, reminiscing about old memories. Then out of nowhere she said, Hey, let's play a game. I'll show you pictures of my friends and you have to rate how attractive they are on a scale of 1 to 10. I chuckled, a bit surprised by the suggestion. Are you sure? That seems like it could get awkward really fast. Claire nudged me playfully. Oh, come on, it'll be fun. Don't take it so seriously. It's just a silly game between husband and wife. I agreed hesitantly, still feeling unsure about the idea. But Claire seemed excited to play this little game. So I went along with it. She started flipping through more photos on her Facebook and would show me each friend one by one. They were a mix of women she knew from high school, college, previous jobs, and even a few I had met before at parties over the years. As she displayed each picture, I did my best to provide a rating from 1 to 10 based solely on physical appearance. I made sure Claire knew I was basing my ratings only on superficial looks and not factory in personality whatsoever. Some of the women I rated lower were actually really cool people that I liked a lot as friends of Claire's. But for the purposes of this silly game, I put aside any other knowledge I had of them. About halfway through, we got to a photo of Claire's old college friend, Emily. I gave Emily an 8 out of 10, which turned out to be the highest rating I had provided so far. Claire turned to me with a playful smile. Oh, so you think Emily's the prettiest out of all my friends, huh? I laughed, hey now, you were the one who suggested this game. I'm just answering honestly, like you told me to. Claire nodded, I know, I'm just teasing you. So, if you had the chance, would you hook up with Emily? I was a bit thrown off by the question. What? No, of course not. Come on, you know I would never actually want to pursue anything there. Claire held up her hands apologetically. You're right, I was just joking around. I know you only have eyes for me. We left it at that, and I thought nothing more of the exchange. But over the next few days, Claire kept finding ways to bring up Emily and joke about how attracted I was to her. At first, I laughed it off, assuming Claire was just teasing me in fun. Eventually, I started to feel uncomfortable with where this might be headed. One night, when she made another coy comment about Emily, I said firmly, Claire, you know I have zero interest in Emily or anyone else right. You're my wife and I'm fully committed to our marriage. Claire looked surprised by the serious tone in my voice. She came over and put her hands on my shoulders reassuringly. Of course I know that, honey. I was just kidding around about Emily. I'm sorry if I took the joke too far. I would never actually want you to pursue another woman. I exhaled, relieved by her response. Okay, good. I just wanted to make that crystal clear. Claire smiled warmly and pulled me in for a long kiss. I felt silly for doubting her intentions. We had a wonderful, faithful marriage, and a harmless joke surely wouldn't jeopardize that. Or so I thought. The following weekend, Claire and I attended a big house party held by her friend Lauren and her husband Charles. Emily was there too along with about 30 other guests who were mostly couples around our age. It was a lively night full of drinking, dancing and raucous conversations fueled by alcohol. As the night wore on, someone suggested we liven things up by playing a provocative game. Lauren and Charles had the movie 2 plus 2 and thought it would be fun for us to watch it together. The plot centered around two couples who decide to swap partners for a night to reignite the passion in their stale marriages. Claire and I glanced at each other uneasily as the movie progressed, both thinking the same thing. This seemed an inappropriate choice given the jokes Claire had made recently about Emily. 
Sure enough, when the movie ended, Claire immediately called out with a smirk. So, shall we draw names from a hat? Everyone laughed uncomfortably. An awkward silence followed as we all looked around at each other. For a brief moment, it seemed like someone might actually suggest we give partner swapping a try. Thankfully, Emily's husband Joshua spoke up to break the tension, saying sarcastically, Yeah, great idea, Claire. Let's completely ruin our marriages for the sake of a cheap thrill. That snapped us all back to reality. Everyone chuckled and the bizarre moment quickly faded away as we transitioned into another activity. Claire and I certainly had no intentions of partner swapping. We were relieved when the party wound down and we could head home. But a few nights later at dinner, Claire brought up that party incident. It's crazy some couples actually do stuff like that, she mused. I mean, I guess I can understand wanting to spice things up after years of marriage. But it seems way too risky, if you ask me. I nodded in emphatic agreement. Yeah, I think that's one Pandora's box that's better left unopened. To my disappointment, Claire responded, I don't know, I can kind of see the appeal. I frowned. What do you mean? Claire avoided eye contact with me. I'm just saying, the excitement of sleeping with someone new could be an interesting way to inject novelty into a marriage. Purely on a physical level, of course. I put down my fork and stared at her. Claire, are you actually suggesting we involve other people in our marriage? No, no, of course not, she said unconvincingly. I was just thinking out loud and nothing more. We moved on to another topic, but I couldn't stop thinking about why Claire kept insinuating we open up our marriage. As the days passed, she continued dropping not-so-subtle hints about how intriguing it could be to invite others into our bedroom. I made sure to shut down every mention of anything non-monogamous. I was growing increasingly concerned about where this new fascination of Claire's might lead. But when I asked her directly if she was interested in an open relationship, she denied it emphatically. Of course not, she insisted. I'm completely satisfied with you, Mark. I only brought it up because I thought it would be exciting for asterisk you asterisk to experience another woman. But if you're not into the idea at all, then neither am I. Her words provided some relief, though I still couldn't figure out why she was so hung up on pushing me to hook up with other people. I reiterated firmly that I had zero desire for anyone but her. With that established, I hoped we could finally put this odd chapter behind us. The following month, Claire, and I continued socializing regularly with Emily and Joshua. The two couples had become close friends over the past year or so. Whenever we all hung out, Claire would make flirty jokes insinuating that Emily and I were attracted to each other. Emily would just laugh it off nervously while I did my best to redirect the conversation elsewhere. I started to feel bad for Emily being dragged into Claire's weird fixation. One night Claire came home from the gym giddy about a conversation she had with Emily in the locker room. You'll never believe this, I was chatting with Emily and it turns out she has a little crush on you. I rolled my eyes. Yeah, sure she does. No, I'm serious, Claire exclaimed. She kept going on about how handsome and fit you are. I think she really does have the hearts for you. I sighed. Come on, Claire. You know Emily doesn't actually have feelings for me. You're her friend. Don't make up stuff like that. Claire crossed her arms indignantly. I'm not making it up. Why won't you believe me? I could tell she was going to continue insisting Emily was attracted to me no matter how much I denied it. I decided to take an alternative approach. Okay, fine, let's say Emily does have a crush on me. So what? I challenged. Why does it even matter? It's never going to lead to anything. Claire shook her head. I'm just telling you what she confessed to me. It's up to you what you want to do with that information. I threw my hands up in exasperation. Are you actually giving me permission to hook up with your friend? Because that's sure what it sounds like. No, of course not. Claire replied, I just thought you should know, that's all. Don't be so paranoid. I didn't know what to believe anymore. One minute Claire was adamant about keeping our marriage exclusive, and the next she was playing matchmaker between me and her friend. 
I decided I needed to get to the bottom of this odd pattern of behavior one way or another. The following week, Claire announced that she and Emily had been planning a weekend getaway for the two couples at a beachside resort. Doesn't that sound like fun? She asked cheerfully. The four of us haven't taken a trip together in so long. I knew immediately that this little vacation was going to end up being anything but relaxing. However, I saw it as the perfect opportunity to call Claire's bluff and uncover her true motives. So I played along as if I was totally on board. That sounds awesome. I told her enthusiastically. It'll be nice to just kick back and have some fun in the sun with friends. Claire blinked, apparently surprised I had agreed so readily. Oh great, she stammered. Yeah, it'll be nice to kick back and have some fun. As we drove to the resort that Friday, I made casual conversation with Joshua out front while Claire and Emily chatted in the back seat. But there was definitely an undercurrent of tension. Claire kept whispering and giggling with Emily, no doubt fueling her delusional perception that Emily had a crush on me. We arrived at the resort in the mid-afternoon. After checking in and changing into our swimsuits, we spent the next few hours sunbathing and sipping cocktails by the pool. I tried to pull Emily aside to apologize for the awkward position my wife had put her in. But there was never a good moment with Claire watching us like a hawk. That evening, the resort hosted a lively party on the outdoor patio with food, dancing, and an open bar. The alcohol was flowing freely, which I suspected was part of Claire's master plan. Sure enough, as the night wore on, Claire wrapped up her not-so-subtle innuendos about Emily and me. At one point when she mentioned something about the sexual tension between us, I said firmly, Claire, can I talk to you alone for a minute? I pulled her aside and spoke quietly through gritted teeth. What exactly are you trying to orchestrate here? Do you actually want me to hook up with Emily? Claire giggled and swayed tipsily. No, of course not. I'm just having fun, that's all. Loosen up. I frowned. Well, it's making both Emily and I'm really uncomfortable. So please stop playing games and stirring up trouble. Claire held up her hands in concession. Okay, ye fine. I was just being silly. Let's go have fun with our friends. With a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach, I followed Claire back to rejoin the party. The rest of the night proceeded without incident. But I knew Claire likely had plans to push boundaries further once we were alone. Sure enough, shortly after returning to our hotel room, Claire immediately suggested Emily come over to hang out more intimately. I point blank refused and told her I was going to bed. Claire seemed frustrated, but dropped the idea for the moment. As I lay there trying to sleep, I racked my brain for what Claire's end goal could be. The most logical explanation was that she must be wanting to hook up with Joshua herself and was trying to set up a partner swap situation to accomplish that. Why else would she be so fixated on pushing me toward Emily? I eventually dozed off, determined to get to the bottom of this first thing in the morning. But when I awoke, I found myself alone in the room. Panicked, I quickly got dressed and rushed over to Emily and Joshua's room. My worst fears were confirmed when Emily answered the door. There was Claire exiting the bathroom, looking utterly shocked to see me. Emily gasped and covered her mouth at the sight of me standing in the doorway. Claire clutched the bedsheet around her naked body, struggling to speak. Mark, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be back home, Claire stammered. I shook my head in disgust. Wow, what a performance you two have been putting on. Did you get what you wanted, Claire? Are you satisfied now? Claire burst into tears. Please, I can explain everything. She cried. I never meant for it to go this far. Meanwhile, Emily sat on the bed in stunned silence, her face pale. Joshua emerged from the shower, clearly confused by the commotion. Dude, what's going on? He asked her nervously. Why aren't you guys leaving this morning? I ignored him, keeping my eyes fixed angrily on Claire. You've got 60 seconds to help me understand what would possess you to pull a stunt like this behind my back. It just sort of happened, Claire sobbed. Emily and I got to drinking last night while you and Joshua were asleep. We started confessing sexual fantasies to each other and realized we were both attracted to each other's husbands. 
One thing led to another, and before we knew it, we had made a plan to sneak over here this morning to, you know. I clenched my fists, barely able to contain my rage. You're unbelievable. You've been pressuring me to hook up with Emily this whole time, when really you wanted her for yourself. Do our marriage vows mean nothing to you? Claire shook her head vehemently. Of course they do. I feel horrible about last night. I don't know what came over me. It was never about not loving you. I was just curious, that's all. Please forgive me. At that, Emily interjected softly. She's telling the truth, Mark. This was never Claire's master plan or anything devious like that. We had too much to drink and let our impulses take over. I'm so sorry. Her words seemed sincere, but they didn't mitigate Claire's betrayal in my eyes. I no longer recognized this woman crying before me. The Claire I thought I knew and loved would never crush me like this. I took a deep breath in an attempt to collect myself. I think it's best if we cut this weekend short, I said evenly. You two clearly have some things you need to work out yourselves. Without waiting for a response, I grabbed my bag and stormed out to go check out of the resort. Claire and Emily frantically called after me, but I ignored them. My mind was consumed with how to move forward after this ultimate violation of trust. The car ride home later that morning was tense and silent. I refused to even look at Claire sitting next to me in the passenger seat. When we got home, I told her coldly, I'm going to a hotel. I need time away to process all this. With that, I turned and left as Claire dissolved into a puddle of tears. I checked into a nearby hotel, collapsed on the bed, and let all the emotions I had been suppressing come flooding out. I felt utterly blindsided and betrayed by Claire's behavior. We had always been faithful and committed, or so I thought. How could my wife of 12 years suddenly become someone I didn't even recognize? Over the next week holed up in that hotel room, I turned the situation over and over in my mind. I grappled constantly with whether or not I should try to salvage my marriage or just walk away entirely. Claire called me constantly, which I ignored at first, but eventually answered. She was a complete wreck, crying, not eating or sleeping, filled with apologies and regrets. She swore nothing like this would ever happen again if I just gave her another chance. But even if I could get past this incident, how could I ever fully trust Claire again? Anytime she went out with friends or on a business trip, doubts and suspicion would eat away at me. The foundation of our marriage had crumbled. Did we stand a chance at rebuilding from these ashes? After much agonizing contemplation, I realized I needed to let Claire go and move on with my life. As painful as it was, too much damage had been done. There were no kids to think about, and at 35 years old, I was still young enough to start fresh. So I met with my lawyer to file for divorce, Claire desperately trying to change my mind up until the very end, but I held firm in my decision. The woman I had loved no longer existed.